And then number four, you've got to build your life on the right foundation. How many of you think that that's important? If Jesus gave us some advice and he came to preach for us here, would we listen and heed what he had to say? I'm just curious. I think we would. Well, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gave us some very important information here today. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24 says this. It says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now, how many of you realize Jesus isn't talking about architecture and physical structure? Although he had some insight there. Come on. He's talking about your life. He's talking about your home. He's talking about your family. He's talking about the, 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 the person that you are. What are you building your life on? And, and there are two things that are very evident in Jesus' words. And the first one is this, that storms are coming. I wish I could tell you that it's always going to be fair weather and happy times and blue skies and all of that. But I've got to tell you something. I, I have to preach the truth. The storms come into every single life. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trouble and tribulation. I, I wish it were different. And one day when Christ comes back, come on, somebody, it will be different. But until then, we're going to have to face some storms, right? So storms are coming. Jesus guarantees us that. And then the second thing that he made very evident in this teaching that he gave is that storms reveal the strength of the foundation of your life. That reveals the strength of the foundation of your life. If your house is built on the wrong foundation, it will not last. It will fall. Uh, you know, the storm revealed that the foundation wasn't right. The, the, the foolish man built his house upon the sand, and he did not, he heard the words that Jesus said, but he simply didn't do them. And how incredibly powerful are the words of this teaching where he says, How great was its fall! How great was its fall? I don't know if you've ever seen anything uh, relationally collapse or not, but let me tell you something. I have seen that with my own eyes. I've been a witness to it. I remember the first time as a young pastor, man, I was, I, I had all my hair back then. Man, it was so nice. But anyway, I was like 27 years old, and, and I got called over to Ray and, and, and Utiva's house, and Tommy was there, their adopted son, and Ray was packing his stuff to leave, and Tommy was 13 years old and he's standing there with tears streaming down his face and Yativa's crying and have been crying all night long and I'm standing there pleading with this man saying come on man let's give it a try let's do something different I, I, and yet he walked out the door and it, I can relate to what it says and great was its fall it's hard it's painful especially when you love people Come on, who loves people in here? Wave your hand. Amen. When you really love people, you, you don't want to see people go through hurt and pain like that. Great was its fall. But if your life has a firm foundation, if it's built on the rock Christ Jesus, it's a, if the foundation of your life is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if you build your life upon the Word of God, if like Jesus says, you not only hear these sayings, come on, but you also do them. You're not just a hearer of the Word, but you're a doer of the Word. Oh, my friend, I can tell you this on the authority of the Word, that when the storm comes and the rain beats against the house and the enemy says, watch this, I'm going to destroy this thing. Oh, no. No, my friend, all of a sudden, all of that will leave. And there is the house standing there just as strong as it has ever been. Come on, somebody. If you believe that you can build your house on the rock, give God a big hand of praise in this place. Storms reveal the foundation of your life. And I love the way Jesus put it. He said, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. So the question becomes, 
Are you building your home, your life, your family as being founded on the rock, Christ Jesus? That rock is Christ. You know, there are 17 verses in the Bible that speak of Jesus Christ as being a rock or a cornerstone or a foundation. I was looking at these and I was just incredibly, you know, it's obvious if you study the word what he was talking about. 1 Corinthians 10, 4 says, that rock was Christ. Come on. He has to be the foundation, the cornerstone of your life. Amen. And I believe that if you don't know Jesus Christ today, you'll surrender your life to him. Make him the foundation of your life that you'll be able to build a home, a family, a life that will stand the storms of time. Someone said to me, you know, I was reading this week, excuse me, you know, where, where, where people have taught that, that the level of divorce within the body of Christ is the same as that that's out in the world. That's not exactly true, my friend. They've done further studies about that, and they've gotten a little bit deeper into people's hearts and lifestyles and the way that they live, and this is what they've discovered, that couples who go to church every week, who read the Bible together and pray together, those couples only have a 1 in 1,135 uh, chance of divorce, uh, rate of divorce. Isn't that incredible? I'm just here today to tell you what that tells me is that people who hear the words that Jesus said and do them, they'll have a powerful life. And so I'm not talking about giving Jesus 20% of your life. I'm talking about a full commitment coming, becoming a full disciple of Jesus Christ. How many of you know there's a difference between saying, well, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Sure. Yeah, I need him to save me from my sins. There's a difference between that and saying, you know something, I'm going to be a disciple of Jesus. I'm going to be a follower of Jesus. I'm going to be a seeker of Jesus. I'm going to be one who walks the way he wants me to walk and live the way he wants me to live. Come on, somebody let's give God a big hand to pray <laughs> yesterday at the memorial service Ferlin and O.C. I've known them for about four years you know Ferlin went through a lot of difficulties with Parkinson's disease and you know a lot of suffering that you know he had and and uh, you know but I realized they were married 43 years 43 years they built their life on the rock the storms came, the winds came. Yes, Ferlin went to be with Jesus, but I'm going to tell you something. Amen. What a testimony that is. Come on. And then number five, I'm going to close with this today. If you want to reboot your family, perhaps you need to take responsibility for your children's spiritual growth. Take responsibility for your children's spiritual growth. If you're a parent, you have an amazing, incredible responsibility. If you've got kids or teens, and I honestly believe that if you're a grandparent, you also have, you know, some level of responsibility. It's your job and my job to teach our kids how to live and what the Bible says and to train them up and raise them up in a spiritual sense. Deuteronomy chapter 6 uh, speaks of this, and there are a lot of people who say, well, you know, I just thought that was the church's job. Nowhere in the Word of God does it give the church that responsibility. Did you know that? Find it. Find it. It's your responsibility to teach your children. This is what Moses said to the families in his day, and it's great advice, great counsel for this day. He says, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. And he goes on to say, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Now, we don't do those kind of things anymore. I mean, we certainly we could. But, but let me tell you something, this idea of impressing them on your children, talking about it just in the day-to-day -day life. Amen. You know, your kids are not going to do what you say. They're going to do what you do. Come on, somebody. They're going to follow in the way that you act. 
I've got this great story. I had a friend and and uh, graduate went to high school with him and 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 he I, I went to, to to you know actually he invited me as a missionary when I was a missionary to he's going to buy my buy my breakfast and it was crazy because we we bought breakfast. These were the days when people carried cash. You know, how many of you remember those days? Okay, all of y'all are getting old. Okay, and so anyway, I, I never forget that day. We got to the he had he grabbed the check right away like he was going to get it. He got to the counter and he pulled out his wallet and and he opened it up oh, there was no money in there he goes oh i'm so sorry can you get this i'm like yeah i got it i got it i paid for it what was crazy was about three months later, I was with this guy's dad, and he, he invited me to lunch, the same exact thing. He grabbed the check, walked up to it, and guess what he did? He reached in his billfold, pulled that out, and he says, oh, no, I don't have any money. And, man, I just said, oh, this is awesome. I'll be glad to get it. Because I thought to myself, man, I got the world's greatest sermon illustration right there. I'm going to tell you something. It's our job to teach our kids. You say, well, what is the responsibility of the church? The church has the responsibility that we, we gather together and we join together as groups of families that we, we teach our kids together. Come on. And that's why coming to church is important. Come on. If your child missed Sunday school or, or youth or what, yeah, I mean, it's important you bring them. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to belabor that point, but... But kids need church. They need fellowship. You say, well, pastor, can you guarantee me if I bring my kids to church that they'll have an experience with God? Uh, I can't guarantee that. But I can guarantee you one thing. That if they're sitting at home playing whatever, they're, they're not going to have an experience with God. Hello, somebody. Come on. Okay, I'm preaching. I'm meddling around in here today. I better be cautious. Okay. But I believe that God stands for relationships and families. He loves that. He loves it. And I have a heart for families that are hurting. I really do. I really do. Have you ever been in a store and all of a sudden, you, you know, you, you see a husband and a wife. I was in Sam's the other day and, you know, this husband just was, I mean, just getting on his wife. And I'm just like, oh, dude, come on, man. Stop. I wanted to walk over and say, look, man, I'm a pastor. Can I pray for you? I didn't have the courage. I wish I'd have done that. I should have. You know, uh, He was bigger than me. But anyway, I, I, that wasn't it. It just wasn't, my, it wouldn't, it wasn't appropriate. But, but my heart went out. And so the rest of the time I was shopping, I was just praying for that couple. And prayer works. Come on, somebody. And we got to believe God for our families. Would you stand with me?